Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين In the name of Allah, the compassion of the merciful, all praise is due to Allah and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon his prophet Muhammad, his family, his companions and his followers all until the day of judgment. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is my greeting to you, the greeting of peace, peace be upon you. Now, I've already covered in this series human rights and Muslim perspective, some of the important points regarding the need for religion, for humanity, in order to go for the protection of their own rights and the demand for their own rights. And I'm going to dwell more on the honoring of man. We've already covered one point, which is where Allah made a Khalifa on earth in order to fulfill what Allah wants from humanity. And that is absolutely the responsibility of man. It's a big trust and a heavy, heavy responsibility. Secondly, in order to know the honoring of Allah to man, Allah asked his angels to prostrate to him. Allah says, وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ أَبَىٰ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَعَ السَّاجِدِينَ and remember when we said to the angels, you prostrate to Adam out of respect, not out of worship, because it's very, very important. No one prostrates to another one out of worship. This is not allowed. But this was an exceptional case during the creation of Adam and when Allah created him and he made him full human and ready to be conducting his job on earth, Allah asked the angels to prostrate to him out of respect, and they all accept it, except Iblis, the Satan, who did not want to obey this, and it was the first sin ever committed against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Out of his own arrogance, he did not want to do it, and therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took him out of paradise into this life and he will be in hell at the end of life on the day of judgment. But during this life, he works in order to deceive people, to work against the interests of human beings. Therefore, shaitan is there and shaitan is not present physically before our eyes. He is present in our lives. But since he was from the jinn, he was from these creatures that we cannot see, but rather they will creep inside our hearts and minds. They will whisper into our hearts and minds. And therefore, we need to be very careful of what they say because we will have that interest. Look, Allah created within man so many enemies. He created the soul which is looking for its own whims and desires. He created the Satan in order to deceive human beings and to lure them towards his own way and path in order to be with him in hellfire. And he created people within every nation, every people who are so adamant against Allah and his own way. And these people will ever be there. So we have to watch. We have to be very careful. That's the advice to humanity. That unless you are aware of these enemies and you are cautioned by Allah to always guard against them, otherwise if you submit, you'll go their own way. 
and then they will lead you astray. Yes, Allah honored man by this fact that he was prostrated for by the angels. But because of that great honoring, Iblis came in and again was given this ability to deceive people and to lead them astray from the path of Allah by Allah's wish and knowledge. But that is for us to be aware. So in this regard, we know that man is ready to be good. In fact, goodness is instilled in the heart of every human being. This is what we call al-fitrah. That is the tendency to be good and to know the truth. فِطْرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَطَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا لَا تَبْدِيلَ لِخَلْقِ اللَّهِ This is the fitrah and the state of nature where a person is ready to accept the truth, to be good, to understand the message, and to follow the path of Allah according to the prophets that they were sent and the books that they were revealed and take guidance from there. So that goodness we can see some of Allah's characteristics and attributes were given partially to human beings. Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has his own distinctive way of these attributes which are not in no way similar to what humans have, yet Allah has a full knowledge and ilm and humans have their own knowledge which is suitable for their own being and suitable for their own existence and they will be always limited compared to the full knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have irada, which is a will to do an act. They have this ability to speak and communicate and so on and so forth. So Allah has given them this part of what He has subhanahu wa ta'ala, part of His creation, again as an honor for human beings. Yet, people do not listen to this and that's why we have the misuse of the rights of people and from here we can see why there are violations of human rights because there will always be conflicts among people. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made man superior because of the faculty of reasoning he has given him which is not found with anyone else among the creation and secondly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him this high spirit spirituality which can go up and can lead a person into the sensing of being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now that others don't have this yes they have their own life and they go by their own instincts as animals or creatures that grow on their own when they're being fed or given water in order to grow and so on, but they have their own limited life no matter how long they would live. But man has these abilities. Not only was man honored during his own life, but rather even after his death, man is honored. Allah created man in the best of fashion. He gave him the ability to walk and to act. Yes, he may not have these powers that other animals may have, but he deprived them of the ability to reason, the ability to think, the ability to survive, like he gave to humans. Yes, we can see cheetahs being so fast in running, lions and tigers having the most of power and to survive based on this. But he did not give them the reasoning and the mind and this combination of spirit and reasoning and other faculties that man only has. So these are things that we found Allah created in the best of fashion. Look at the creation of man with his own beautiful face where he can, by the way, make them even more beautiful by taking care of his own hair, by keeping his beard if he's a man, by 
making themselves beautiful as women, adding ornaments, adding these things which are not possible for animals. These are very basic things that everyone is able to see and observe. But the most important thing is that Allah created us in the best form and fashion and also at the same time gave us the ability to use everything in the heavens and the earth. All what you see in the creation was made for the service of man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for example says, وَجَعَلْنَا اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ آيَتَيْنَ فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْصِرَةً لِتَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِّن رَبِّكُمْ وَلِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ وَالْحِسَابِ وَكُلَّ شَيْءٍ فَصَّلْنَاهُ تَفْصِيلًا We made the night and the day two signs and the sign of the night was made dark فَمَحَوْنَا آيَةَ اللَّيْلِ and we made the sign of the day as bright وَجَعَلْنَا آيَةَ النَّهَارِ مُبْصِرَةً لِتَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِّن رَبِّكُمْ so that you may seek some grace from your Lord وَلِتَعْلَمُوا عَدَدَ السِّنِينَ الْحِسَابِ so that the turning of the day and night is for you to know the history and the number of years and to record and so on because if they follow the same system we are able to know what happened during which time and for how long and so on and so forth so Allah made this very easy everything that we see in this universe is for us to benefit from and to use it in the right way I have more on these issues on human rights a Muslim perspective so please stay with us <laughs> Thursdays provide. In Britain, we are facing one big problem. That are you Muslim or British? The space to talk. In India, back home, they ask, are you a Muslim first or Indian first? And we Muslims should know how to reply, how to turn the tables over. The place to knock. Why Trinity cannot be regarded in that sense? Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The opportunity to ask. But even if you agree that what the Christians say, that he was crucified, so if Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, died for three days, who controlled the world? That means even God died? The freedom to unmask. So there are various ways which we can prove the argument to be wrong. Let's meet Dr. Zakir every Thursday at 6.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 9.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Learning simple. We protect the community. Understanding easy. He is the just and he loves justice. Sheikh Salim Al-Amri. If Allah is going to establish justice, even between animals, how about human beings? Adoption fruitful. You hear the adhan and you pray. The Prophet ﷺ said the dividing line between Islam and apostasy is the prayer. Grasp and follow the basic tenets to stand firm on the path of Islam in Tips for Islamic Life every Saturday at 3.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 2 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Islamic International School presents The purpose of creation is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Precious presenters The moral excellence is one of the major objects of Islam Promising broods. It is the belief in Allah. The Quran is the greatest miracle of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you are neglecting the rights of other people, then you are becoming immoral. An arrogant person will never enter the Jannah. Death does not define this nation. Harding role models. Ekambraham dutya naste. Bhagwan eki hai. Dursa nahi hai. Nahi hai, nahi hai. Zara bhi nahi hai. Watch Dyes of Islamic International School in Trendsetters every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And we are back talking about the honoring of man and the importance of leading a good life based on preserving your own rights. And I would say that Islam came to give us the best that we can achieve in this life. And even with the challenges and the enemies that are going to be available and 
present when we are in this life, we still cannot overcome them easily by the grace of Allah. However, look at the Sharia ah and what Islam came to do in order to understand the concept of human rights away from the practices and the interest of some people here and there. Islam came to preserve five necessities. And these are the great interests ever. The great interests of man to preserve his religion, preserve his life, to preserve his mind and ability to reason, his own honor and lineage, and to protect his wealth and belongings. So these are the five things, religion, life and soul, mind and reasoning, honor and lineage, and property and wealth. All of this is very, very important in order for us to find what we can do in this regard. Let me tell you about these issues and these issues first if I can explain them one by one I would say for example after I talk to you about the need for religion in order to lead us straight and not to go astray away from the religion first by protecting our religion and we talked about the need for religion we need to understand why we came the purpose of our creation and the rules of Islam regarding the belief system and the basics of this belief system so that man will not be misguided the need for religion is more dire than the need for anything else it is the most essential thing in life and our scholars would tell you that the need for ilm, the true knowledge of the purpose of our creation, and the religion which will guide us in life, all is very essential, more important than the air we breathe, the water we drink, and the food we take. You would be saying, why is that the case? Well, we will say this is the case because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to go in a certain way. To follow a particular path and if that is not the case then what is the benefit of our life even if we live years and years but in misguidance and mischief or only to serve our very basic needs just like the animals animals would live to eat drink walk around and to be used by man for his own services but nothing beyond that this is the case unfortunately for many people in this life, they would be born and they may face challenges. They need to be, of course, earning their own livelihood. They will go and work in a company or in a farm or in a factory or wherever. They would be finding a job that suits their abilities and circumstances. And that would be probably the end of their own aim, even if they go higher and higher in position and they live a certain way of life, even if it has all the luxuries, and then what? At the end, they'll be departing this world. They will be leaving to where they came from, and they will be buried, or their body will not be alive anymore. Is this the purpose of creation? Did Allah create us to produce all these people? just to work on earth and many of them by the way suffer lots of injustices and they will be people with different levels of earning of understandings of talents and skills and the level of the ability to reason and the more some people are fortunate they will be leading a life they may abuse others they may take the rights of others and most people will be the average or even below average if you look around the world nowadays you can observe for yourself now of course this is not the purpose the purpose is to know why you were created you were created for a greater purpose even if you do not have all the abilities to live 
a more happy and prosperous life. If you are given the right guidance, you'll find happiness inside your heart. Because many people, although they would have all the possible material gains in their possession and in their hearts, they're still not happy because they have vacuum inside their hearts and they cannot fulfill it unless they know the truth, unless they take it from the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Obviously, we know that if we are given the right faith and the right attitude, then obviously we need to lead our life according to the law of Allah. And if the law is being applied to us, then obviously we will go happy and we will enjoy. And the Sharia has created some deterrence in order to show these people that if you cross the boundaries, you will be punished. You'll be facing the consequences. So if they go by the law, they will live happily. If they transgress, obviously, they will pay for this transgression. Just like you live in any society. However, with Allah, it's justice. It's not according to people to inflict any particular penalty, but to say this is right and this is wrong. No, it has to be decided by the Creator, by the one who knows what is good for you and what is bad for you. What will prevent you from committing evil and what will help you to do good in this life. That's why we need religion. That's why we need to protect religion. That's why it is the right of every human being to have a life. But when they cross and they transgress against religion, which is the basis for being here to begin with, obviously they need to pay the consequences for this. And in order to save the whole community of believers and the whole humanity from destruction and the anger of Allah, if they do not abide by this religion. That's why we need to always do the right thing. Although, if we're asked to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we know that we may have weaknesses, shortcomings, problems here and there. And that's why Allah has made it easy in the law that we can always take permissions. We can always take the easy way out based on what the Sharia asks us to do. It's not a stringent Sharia or law that will make us all feel that we are unable to perform what the Sharia wants from us. Always do whatever you are able to under your own circumstances, under your own knowledge, under your own ability. And if you cannot do it, you're not asked. Allah says, fear Allah to the best of your ability. And the Prophet ﷺ said, ما نهيتكم عنه فانتهوا وما أمرتكم به من أمر فأتوا منه ما استطعتم. Whenever I ask you to stay away from something, then stay away because it's easy to do it. And if I ask you to do something, do whatever you can whatever you are able to. That is the ease of the Sharia. And always we have certain rules in the Sharia that whenever it is hard, we will go to what is easy. And Allah says, Inna ma'al usri yusran, inna ma'al usri yusran. Verily, for every hardship there is ease. And for the same hardship there is another ease. So the scholars say that there are two eases for every hardship. Not only one easy way out for every hardship, but rather there are two. Meaning that we are able to do things that are required of us, but we need to come to protect and preserve the religion and be ready to perform the duties, such as the purity for wudu and we can make some voluntary work and we can live happily by being good and kind to people, by taking extra steps towards raising our credit with our Creator. So religion is essential and very, very important. And without it, we cannot have a happy and prosperous life 
and the most important thing is to win in the hereafter. That's what matters. And I need to end with this, hoping to continue in the coming episodes on this series, Human Rights, a Muslim Perspective. Until then, I leave you with Allah's care and protection. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya wasi' al-afu Ya wasi' al-afu Wal-ghufran wal-karami Qajjirtu murtajifan Min zallat al-qadami Dhanbi azimun Who was the first prophet? Was a prophet the first one to read and write? Did God speak to a prophet? A prophet in a prison. A prophet who commanded the birds, insects, and animals? Want to know more? Join us for Stories of the Prophets. Stories of the Prophets every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10.30 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Oh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 3008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. Today, one of the most common misconceptions in the world about Islam is that Islam was fed by the sword. But the noted historian, the Lacey O'Leary, has a different opinion in his book, Islam at the Crossroads, on page number eight. Page number eight. Page number eight. Page number eight. He says that history makes it clear, however, that the legend of fanatical Muslims sweeping through the world and forcing Islam at the point of the sword upon conquered races is one of the most fantastically absurd myths that the historians have ever repeated. Ever repeated.